guys, Jody with On Fire Fit, and welcome to another episode of Shoe Review, which I will bring you closer as I put on these shoes, and later I will do a review as well as a runway walk, but we are going to be talking about how to level up in your life. First, let's look at the shoes. Well, I have a lot of different things to review, actually, <laughs> but I focused on shoe review, but this skirt is also part of my review. You'll see more when I'm downstairs walking and doing my review, but thank you for this skirt as a review. I actually have on some jewelry, which was sent as a review too, so... Thank you for that. People do ask me why I don't wear toe rings more, and I have talked about this a little bit, I think, on Patreon. But part of the problem is, depending on the way that your toes are, I don't have a lot of space between. And so certain shoes, if my foot is sort of pushed together, it's not very comfortable. So... I don't know if there's certain jewelry that is more comfortable in that regard. You guys can share if you already know that answer. But depending on which shoes I'm wearing, I will sometimes put on jewelry. But also I have some anklets, but the particular pair of shoes that I'm going to be putting on here have a lot of stuff going on with the ankle. So I didn't want to be trying to navigate that around an anklet but let's first look so this they came in a in a box like this kind of like a little slide out box like that Vi vivian looks like vivian vivian or vivian <laughs> sorry if i'm saying it wrong to whoever the maker is okay Vivian Lee. Okay, so I just realized that on the paper, it spells it out, Vivian Lee. And this looks like a shoe that goes into a Y. Very clever, but this is supposed to be an L going into a Y, so Vivian Lee. So that's the brand. And so I'm gonna put these on, they are, you know, a little tricky in some regards because of all the straps and stuff, but they're very pretty. I will, like I said, I'll do a little more review downstairs, but this is part of it. And then Patreon, I do usually, well, not usually, I always have extended content and I also release the videos early. Uh, sometimes people ask me what's on Patreon. It's more of the same. It's just more of what you already see here. Um, if you're on the tiers two and three, I do a live stream and that's way more casual. I kind of have just conversations with you guys, but um, it, it's really in line with what you see here. So if you just want more, great. If you think you're going to get something totally different, go find someone else. <laughs> okay. And then I have a really pretty uh, lavender pedicure. And I don't know if you've seen my fingernails, but I'm glitzed out on my ring finger. So <laughs> all kinds of fun things happening with this. So, so it looks like, you know, I did put these on when I first got them. I have not gone around wearing them yet. So I'll wear them around the house with Patreon and then I will review and I'll give you a little feedback as to how they hold up as I walk around. Now there's probably multiple ways to tie this, you know, front, back. I'm going to tie it in front. And then I'm going to just kind of tuck the little ends down. I don't know that that's exactly the way that they, you know, tell you to or want you to or 
maybe there's another way that some people would rather do it, but that's how I'm going to do it. So let's make sure the knot is fastened. Okay, so here's the lovely pair and let's have a conversation. So leveling up in life is an interesting thing because I think that most people would say that they want to level up in life. I don't think that that's something that anybody is like, yeah, let me stay at the bottom or whatever. I think it's very natural that we all want to level up in life. One of the things that I have been spending a lot of time introspecting as well as listening to godly speakers, reading, all of the things that kind of come at me that I choose, you know, I filter out a lot of stuff in my life, but I also intentionally choose to be exposed to things that I know are going to level me up. One of those things that I have spent a lot of time and I want to continually and repeatedly give credit to this individual, R.C. Blakes. He has a YouTube channel, he's written books, he's a pastor, but more than that, he is very practical with how he gives thoughts and advice. And because of that, I think it's very effective. Instead of just trying to take a Bible verse and smack it on a problem or whatever, he has very specific, detailed things that we can do. Because really what it boils down to in life is God and me, God and you are in a partnership. You are responsible to take action. You cannot just wait for God to always just do. Sometimes you are required to wait on him. Sometimes you are required to take action. But in a lot of areas, we absorb a lot of information and then we don't do anything about it. And what I really like with him is he speaks very practically and very common sense. And he speaks as a father to daughters, to women. He has a, a voice for women. And a lot of women have grown up with perhaps not fatherly advice that was really helpful for them. Or society has kind of twisted things and they believed lies or things that are not actually helping them in life. There is a big part of this though that has to do with men and how men think and how men behave and how men can level up in life. And although he speaks into women primarily, he does speak to men about how they are a part of the solution, a part of the, their own, you know, path in life as far as leveling up. And I recognize that my audience is primarily men. I actually had somebody who is prophetic that spoke that many years ago without knowing me at all, who said, you know, your, your influence is with men. And I thought, it's funny, he didn't know that my ministry had started off that way. And I don't shy away from it. Uh, my women who are here with me, I have my mom, I have my dear friends, Patty, and a number of people from church and other viewers. But a lot of the people that at least make comments, I have conversations with are men. And I'm very blessed by that. I believe that that's not an accident. 
I think that God uses each of us in very unique ways, and we have to embrace that. One of the main things that I really want to introduce as a concept that R.C. Blakes talks about that I think could be revolutionary for you in your life is the concept of what he calls kingology and queenology. And I'm going to be making a series based off of his concepts. This is not my original content, so I'm not trying to steal content. I tell you all the time that I share with you what I am learning, so I am not trying to steal any content. However, I do have some of my own practical examples and some of my own think thoughts that are, are separate but st still fold into this. But this is the concept that I want us to really get a grip on and try to start to embrace. God made us in his image. Male and female, he created them. God made us to be in dominion over the earth. He created us to be in a position of kings and queens, every one of us. Unfortunately, a lot of us don't realize that we have that identity. We have lived in a, what he calls a broken consciousness, not aware of the fact that we were made by God to be a king, made by God to be a queen. A lot of that terminology is twisted and skewed by society. A lot of times you'll hear a woman, well, I'm a queen, but then they are accepting toxic, negative, demeaning behavior from men or speaking death, curses, negativity, whatever about them, themselves or about other women calling each other bees and H's and that is not being a queen. You don't get to say you're a queen and then not act like a queen. You have to have the mentality of an actual queen, which is not superior, but queen mentality, you all know that I love metaphors, right? So queen mentality is this is who I am. This is who God created me to be. And this is how a queen behaves. Not superior, not holier than thou, not like I'm better than anybody, but it's like, no, I deserve to be treated in a certain way, but I also treat people in a certain way. I treat people the way that I want to be treated. I present myself in such a way that I am graceful, kind, generous, loving, forgiving. That's queen mentality, all of that stuff. But it also doesn't tolerate people that are trying to feed in things that are contrary to that or allowing in media that is contrary to that or allowing people to label us contrary to that. So I have been on this journey with On Fire Fit, with social media, in a very interesting path because, of course, I grew up with faith. I also have this gorgeous collection of shoes, primarily from my husband and then from some uh, viewers that have had me do shoe reviews. I am a ballet dancer, and so you end up seeing kind of all of me in my videos. And some of the feedback that I have gotten over the years has made me feel like 
oh, you know, maybe I'm not being authentic. Maybe I am not supposed to be doing this or whatever. And as I've been going through this process, even before I came across this mentality of queenology, I was realizing, you know what? You're never going to please everybody. My husband tells me all of the time, I'm looking at your heart. I know your intention. God's looking at your heart. God knows your intention. You go. That's a king mentality. Let me tell you that. We'll get over to kings in a minute. But that's a king mentality. He lifts me. He supports me. He loves me. And that has had a big influence on why I'm even still here. Plus, I have some of you in my life, in my very close circle, that also speak that into me. And over time, I started to realize I am a queen. Not like I'm better than, and I have to keep saying this because we have this societal thought process of people that go around saying they're a queen and they're acting holier than thou and better and stomping and smashing down and really hurting people. And that is not at all what it means. So it is all about what is an actual queen mentality in a way that is healthy and allowing in the things that still promote more of that health and filtering out the rest and just saying, you know what, that's not on my level. That's not something that I'm going to even entertain. That's toxic. I, I, I don't need that in my life. I don't want that in my life and that I'm better than that. I do know that that negativity or that negative influence is something that is not something that belongs in my life. And so I can, from a very humble position, say I have a queen mentality and I'm learning more to have that queen mentality. And a lot of you feed that into me and remind me of that. I have some very dear close friends that remind me of this on a daily basis. And so I am extremely blessed by that. And that's one of the key factors to leveling up in life is having those kinds of people who speak life into you not they're not just blowing smoke and they're not just trying to get close to you to just you know butter you up but these are genuine people that i've known for a long time that have good for me they have never shown me anything but their genuine love for me and so i trust that now let's get over to kings king mentality and then the reason I even am going with queen first was because I wanted you to know that I think a queen has the right to talk about what a king is. <laughs> so again, I'm staying in my little humble place, but understanding that because of the way that I'm thinking about this, there are some things that make a man a king. And a king is someone that is not lording power over people. In fact, my pastor Jim talked about this the other day in our spiritual warfare class that we've been doing. And he was talking about two types of power. There's the power that the world and religion and things like that hold over people. It's a set of rules and you have to follow and march in this, and then that's all power, right? So if you don't follow this, you're going to jail. If you don't follow this, you're going to hell or whatever, that, that set of rules, there's your marching orders, power, push down. Then there's the power of Jesus. The power of Jesus comes under and lifts. The power of Jesus says, you are a king and you forgot. I made you to be something so much more than you are even 
fathoming at this moment in time. You are a queen and I am going to lift you and take you where you need to go. First and foremost, up here. Because if we don't change this, nothing else is going to change. Our actions are not going to change. Our emotions are not going to change. We're going to be flying around by emotion and we are not going to change. But because Jesus's power lifts, we can be inspired to move in this new direction. So as a king, you have the mentality of Jesus. You come under and lift. So in a king and queen relationship, the king is always lifting his queen. He is always supporting, loving, patient, but he also has his own mind. His future is clear. He knows his goals. He knows what he needs to do. He is not driven by his emotions and he has the ability to act out of what he knows and who he is. So today I'm going to talk about five non-negotiables for queens or kings. And since most of you are probably kings, let's refer mostly to you. But this would apply to a queen or a king. And these again are not my original points or content. This comes from R.C. Blake's. I totally highly recommend that you go find his channel and listen to anything on there that sounds like interesting to you. Um, he is so inspiring. I love listening to him. He has swag, but he, it's not surface swag only. He is swag with the depth to go with it, which is pretty hard to come by. But I love that that is um, something that's being promoted because I think that we have lost so much in this world, but we have hope. Okay, so the first non-negotiable for a queen or king is this. If I do not learn to define myself from within myself, I will be defined by someone else. Let me say that one more time. If I do not learn to define myself from within myself, I will be defined by someone else. He went on to talk about, he used some various Bible verses, but when we are filled with the things of God and what God says about us, those are the things that define us. So for me, when I come into making videos, putting posts out on On Fire Fit, I come from a place of saying, I am a child of God. God gave me gifts and wants me to use them. I have a passion and a love that runs deep with Jesus because I know that he is the one that has set me free, led me into freedom, done things that I could never do by myself. He has given me boldness because his spirit lives in me. And I know that it doesn't matter if people misunderstand me. It doesn't matter if people say derogatory things about me. It doesn't matter if they are saying wonderful things about me and not understanding me. I know who I am. I know I'm getting older. I will one day be an old woman that nobody probably will be too interested. <laughs> Just kidding. We all have a gift and a purpose and we will all have times and places where we belong in our life. But what I do know 
is God has given me certain things that I am making use of now. People are going to get me. People are not going to get me. I don't define myself by what everybody is saying. Partly why I only am scheduling my posts on social media and I am not actually reading any comments because I don't really need to be influenced by the comments. I know what my path is and I know that this is what I have to do. And in the past, I would sometimes without having my strong filter, allow those things to kind of come in and toy with me. And I got to that point where, and I have some of my dear friends here who have been like, those comments are beneath you. Those comments are not reflective of who you are. So don't even entertain them. And I thought, yeah, that, that, that is queen mentality, king mentality. You need to know who you are. Who does God say you are? He says that you are more than a conqueror. He says that you are the head and not the tail. He says that his spirit can lead you in light and not darkness. And so you just have to agree with that. And if you don't, that's your choice. But I would rather be defined by what God says and take that into myself and then filter out the rest of it. Some of those things that people say may be kind of in sync and a lot of it won't be. And you have to know that for yourself. Point number two, happiness attained at the expense of my virtue is short lived and shallow. Happiness attained at the expense of my virtue is short lived and shallow. We don't talk about virtue very much nowadays. So I was like, virtue. I mean, I know virtue, but let's look a little deeper. What's virtue? Virtue is excellence. It's your values, it's your sense of God, it's your purpose. So happiness attained at the expense of your virtue, your excellence, your values, your sense of God and your purpose. If you are getting happiness at the expense of those things, it is short lived and shallow. And I think we've all struggled with this to one degree or another. One of the things that I've said to my son a lot is how you do anything is how you do everything. When you are kind of taking the shortcuts, you're living for the momentary happiness, but it's not excellent. It's not part of your purpose. What are your values? What do you consider to be valuable? Or what kind of values do you want to be known for? Strong character, integrity. What are the things that you find that you want to be considered? And if you know what those are, then you're not going to exchange those things that give you those little temporary hits of happiness that are gonna keep you in that shallow place. They're gonna wear off quickly. If you wanna to go to the next level, if you want to be able to level up, you are going to have to be willing to live by those virtues and not by temporary happiness. He says compromise that deceives the self is, oh, sorry, never mind. If you compromise these, here we go, sorry. If you compromise these, you're deceiving yourself and you never want to compromise your virtue. Now, there are those of us that say, I have compromised my virtue a lot. Maybe over the years, you can think about it. Maybe you don't want to think about it. Maybe I don't want to think about it, but we are given an opportunity every 
day to be a new creation in Christ. Christ has given us forgiveness and grace and mercy, but it's our choice whether we decide to adopt that and go on that path. So if you feel like, yeah, I have traded my virtue, the things that were important to me in the past or things that I actually would like to have in the future for temporary happiness, then today is your day. Shift directions. That's part of what they call repentance. You, just, you realize, hey, that's not the direction I want to go. And you turn and go the other way. That's not a bad thing. You know, in, in religious circles, repentance is like a very common thing. And a lot of people hate to even hear that word because it brings up connotations of like, oh, heaviness and uh, feeling bad about myself. No, that's not what it is. That is going, whoa, this isn't working for me. I need to turn in a different direction. God help me. Number three, point number three, the inability to reject less than I deserve is an invitation to self abuse. The inability to reject less than I deserve is an invitation to self abuse. We have to be content with God our purpose, our vision. And when something doesn't feel right, we have to be able to articulate it and be willing to let people leave, be willing to let people exit. Because if we are going to just absorb anything that comes our way because we don't want to hurt somebody's feelings or we're such people pleasers that it's very hard for us to reject some of the stuff that comes our way, then we are inviting self-abuse. So we have to be willing to know who we are, have a vision, have a purpose, and then be able to reject anything that doesn't line up with that. And so a king mentality would be, God made me to be a strong leader, to be loving and compassionate and humble, not full of pride. God made me to be tender and loving to my queen and lift her up. And anything that comes against that, I'm gonna reject it. And if we can't reject it, then we are going to be abusing ourselves as well as others. Point number four. Strength is my only option to enter. I, to entertain ideas of weakness is self sabotage. Strength is my only option to entertain ideas of weakness is self sabotage. Do not put or allow into your mind anything that is a weakness. If you notice that flare up of weakness coming, you have to go back to remembering who you are, who God made you to be. You're a king. Kings don't think this way. Kings don't act this way. You may, you must not entertain it. This is one of the hardest things, and I, I've talked about the five second rule before that Mel Robbins talks about, which I like because it kind of snaps you out of weak mentalities very quickly if you make use of it. If you notice I'm having a weak moment, five, four, three, two, one, change it. If you're, and I'm gonna use a real basic example, but if you're, laying in bed, the alarm clock goes out off, you want to get up and get out of bed and go work out because you are trying to build strength, which I fully believe that if you are wanting to really level up in life, you're going to have to recruit your physical, your mental, your spiritual, 
your emotional, they, they're going to have to work together. So when you physically show your strength, it is going to help all the other areas. So if you're in bed and you're like, oh, I just don't want to get up. Five, four, three, two, one, get up. If you are going finding something to eat and you're like, I didn't prep anything. I forgot to defrost something. I didn't plan for this. We're going to go out to eat. And you're sitting there looking at the menu and you're like, well, that double bacon cheeseburger looks really good. Five, four, three, two, one salad with chicken. <laughs> um, same thing with all kinds of things. Like I'm speaking to a lot of men right now and I'm going to get, I'm going to, I'm going to use little code words, but I want you to think about this. When you go to websites, they are draining your energy. They are taking you on a path that is sucking energy out of you. And we can go into a whole talk on that. But if you are like starting to toy with that weakness, five, four, three, two, one, go do something. Go for a run, go take a shower, go to the gym, go wash your dishes. Do not entertain weakness. Strength is your only option. Number five, self-reliance is a must. Assistance is a bonus. Self-reliance is a must. Assistance is a bonus. This is one of the things that I think religious people will get all twisted up because they're like, well, we're not supposed to be self-reliant. And I liked how he talked about this though, because he said, no, I make my plans based on God and me. So yes, it is your relationship with God, knowing that he gave you a spirit that is not fearful, but it is strong, powerful with self-control. You are basically agreeing with God and saying, I'm going to be self-reliant. I'm not waiting for everybody else to get it together. I'm not waiting for anyone else to get their life on track so that I can level up. I am not waiting for outside forces, external things to finally get together so I can level up. Leveling up happens here and then through our personal action, despite what's going on around us. If you wait for other things to line up, you will never level up. So you have to make your plans based on you and God. You have to always be in a position where you are self-reliant. That's not to say you don't accept help. And it's not to say that you are so prideful that you say, I don't need anybody's help. But you know, I got to do this. I got to do this for me. I have to be strong. When the right things come in and at the right time and there is assistance in different ways, wonderful. I accept that. But we're not sitting there waiting for it. And we're not sitting there holding our hands out like, you just have to do this and then I'll be able. No, that's victim mentality. God has put everything you need within you. So self-reliance is a must. Assistance is a bonus. All right, do we need to refresh? I did repeat myself because I think that not only does he do that, which is helpful to me, but we need to reinforce this. So remember, King and queen mentality is not being superior to people, but it is a mentality that tells us this is who God made me to be. And I'm going to live it. I'm going to understand it. I'm going to grow my mentality so that I live out that higher level thinking. And I actually put into action 
that higher level thinking. So the first non-negotiable is if I don't learn to define myself from within myself, I will be defined by someone else. Number two, happiness attained at the expense of my virtue is short-lived and shallow. Number three, the inability to reject less than I deserve is an invitation to self-abuse. Number four, strength is my only option. To entertain ideas of weakness is self-sabotage. And number five, self-reliance is a must. Assistance is a bonus. All credit to R.C. Blakes. If you have interest in more depth of this, he has a book, Queenology, Kingology. He has a number of other books. But I want you to take this away with this conversation that we have choice every day what kind of life we want to live and today is the day do not wait till tomorrow to adopt a king mentality do not adopt the mentality that you just have to find a queen so that you can become a king you will find if you're not already married or whatever once you become a king you are going to attract a queen and then you are going to have that mutual satisfaction in value and building and strengthening and you'll level up together. If you're with somebody right now that you don't consider to be royalty, remember they are inside. Unless you're with a really toxic person that you really need to get away from, a lot of people are just broken and they need to change their mentality. We're all broken sometimes. We just need to change our mentality to be healthy. And so maybe that person just needs to learn a new way of thinking. And then level up. Father God, thank you so much for your wonderful way of teaching us about our identity and who we are and that you give us the power to be lifted, to go higher, to move forward in life. And thank you that your power is not the kind that pushes down on us, but that it, it lifts us. It lifts us into a higher place, a better place, peace and love and joy and fruitfulness all come from you. And I know that that comes because Jesus lifted us up. He made the way. He broke us out of this chain of like slavery, bondage, bondage and, and just the things that kind of like hold us back. He, he broke us out of that. So just give us that mentality that will tell us who we are. Let us not forget. Let us not lose sight of that. And help us just to live and walk in the beauty that you have destined for us. I pray for anyone that's listening to the sound of my voice that needs to grab this concept and run with it. Will you please empower them today to change, change direction, learn a new way, embrace this, turn to you. If, if you've been knocking on their door and they have been resisting, will you please knock louder? ring the doorbell <laughs> and just uh, that they would open that door. Thank you for your grace and love in Jesus name. Amen. Okay, let's go for a walk. Oh, we'll also review. Come on downstairs. Okay, so I told you that you would see a bit more of the skirt as well as the shoes and I will do a runway which is a little farther away so you can see the whole thing but yeah I like the skirt I do love pencil skirts anyway and this one's very soft and very I don't know it's kind of the type of thing you could wear all day there are certain clothes that are very dependent on how long I have to wear them <laughs> because they just don't feel super easy and comfortable or, you know, the blouse is always coming untucked. And so it's just like, ugh, you know, but 
this is a really comfortable skirt and I like it. So thank you for sending this one to me. All right, and then now with the shoes. So I walked around the house with Patreon and they did not come undone from this position. Now, the, the knot in certain types of material will easily come undone and they did not come undone. They actually are really comfortable, surprisingly. I kind of thought with all of this extra straps and stuff, it might feel uncomfortable, but they're not. They, they really feel good. I like that they didn't come undone because I, let's see, I think it was my daughter was wearing a pair of shoes and I think every, I don't know, 10 yards or so, she was having to retie, 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 and it was like so annoying for her. Um, but these have not done that. So I like that. I did not get the tape measure out. Let me go grab that so I can tell you how high this heel is. Give me one second. It's so funny because I think I always do this, right? Once in a blue moon, I actually remember the tape measure before I start. Okay, so this is a four inch heel. So not that, not that high. Um, there's a square toe. So let's get a little closer here. Square toe. So I don't know, do you like a square toe? You know, people get very opinionated. Pointed toe, square toe, your toes aren't right for this, or they should be only in this kind of shoe, or what have you. I guess I didn't realize I'm not that picky <laughs> until I started to hear everybody's opinions. I'm like, oh, I like square, I like pointy, I like mule, I like high, I like low, I like pump, I like platform. I was like, wow, I guess I'm not as picky. But this one is square. I have, you know, pretty even toes. So I think the square works fine for that. I'm not really sure how that would work if you had that long second toe. My one friend and I went through this whole thing. There's like a whole history on the anatomy of feet and everything. And it's funny because I forget what type of foot I have, but um, that long second toe, I forget that name as well, but it's like a whole thing. I was like, oh, I didn't even know that. But anyway, so, and then the color I love because it's neutral and I can wear it with, I would probably mostly wear this with dresses or skirts, um, maybe with like shorts maybe with a more of a capri style slack or short uh what do you call those well capris um because with all the straps and stuff i think it would probably conflict with like jeans or whatever but anyway i think they will get really good use i have um plenty of outfits that would go with this and they are unique i don't have anything that looks like it so yeah, I think they're going to be very um, well used and easy to walk around in so I don't have to decide where am I going to be, how far is the parking lot from wherever we're trying to end up, and you know all of the details that matter when you're trying to decide on the shoes you're going to wear. 